Hi, I'm Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. This is Ralphie. Say hi, Ralphie. That's about it. That's all you get. All right, so today, between two shoes, two very similar shoes. Uh, almost so similar that when I was running in it, I kind of sometimes had to look down and make sure which shoe I was running in. That similar, huh? No, nah, I'm exaggerating <laughs> a little bit, but they are pretty similar and I would use them the same way. All right, let's tell them what we're talking about, Thomas. We have the New Balance Rebel V4 here and then the Hoka Mach 6. All right, besides them both being blue, <laughs> these are two shoes that have pretty simple uppers, yep. a simple midsole, a nice outsole, kind of like no frills, but it, the special sauce is what the midsoles are made out of. Yeah, so we can just chat about the Rebel V4 here first. Um, Thomas is talking about the foam. This is now a Piba EVA blended foam, so it's one slab of this foam should we even talk about stack height right now? I mean, we'll get into stack height. Let's okay. talk about the other foam that's in the Hoka. So in the Hoka here, we have a new blend for them that is a super critical foam. So I believe this one is all, is it TPE or is this EVA? EVA. So an EVA super critical foam and it's one slab. So on the mock before it was dual density, it was an EVA foam with a super critical foam like insert. This is just one piece of foam and it works really well. Both foams kind of give you similar feeling underfoot. Yeah, I think they're both really light. They both are fairly responsive. You don't have a plate like we're used to in a lot of these shoes these days where you get that extra repulsion, but they are still responsive and they're just, it's a smooth ride. That's the key. I think it is smooth. I think between being smooth and light, these are shoes that I would use as a daily trainer that you can certainly kind of just on those days where your legs are feeling a little fresher, you naturally just turn up the pace because the shoes are so light on your foot and they just roll. Yeah, I think the nice thing about both of these shoes is that there is enough cushioning underfoot that you can make it a daily trainer. I think previously some of these tempo shoes and models were a little bit closer to the ground, a little bit thinner of a midsole. And so they kind of fell out of rotation for me because you couldn't really use it like a daily trainer. It was strictly for like those speed days, tempo work, but now you can pretty much use this for everything. And that brings us to stack height. You were talking about the cushioning and I think with the lighter weight cushioning, they've increased the stack height to give you more comfort underfoot. The way that companies determine the stack height though, is kind of nuts. So on paper, on the spec sheet that we received from these brands, this is apparently a 30 millimeter to 24 millimeter stack height. Whereas the Hoka is a 37 to 32 millimeter stack height. But you can tell this is almost bigger. It, to the eye, it definitely looks bigger. At the very least, they're very similar, not seven millimeters of difference here. Why so do you think we're getting different measurements? I don't know how they're changing their measurements, but Either way, we're gonna kind of ignore that factor in this comparison because they're very similar. I mean, I think what they're doing is some are measuring the outsole, yeah. the midsole, insole. and the insole to give you the total stack, which is how I'd wanna see the shoe because that's what's underneath your foot is what you wanna know is for stack height. And I think some people, maybe New Balance here, is only measuring the midsole. So not the rubber, not the insole, not the strobel board, anything like that, just the midsole. So that's a little bit of a difference. Let's talk about the upper a little bit. Yeah, so both are very simple uppers. You have the phantom fit here, which is just a fancy term that New Balance likes to use. Uh, it just basically has a nice secure lockdown in the midfoot here. Uh, a gusted tongue, it's very thin and light and very minimal padding. You went into a lot of detail. I was just talking about how they fit. <laughs> so yeah, this one has a gusted tongue and all the things that Megan was talking about. You've got a uh, Creel jacquard upper on this one and very basic lacing, whatever. But this one fits my narrow foot really well. And I was actually gonna be a little surprised if it fit Megan's wider foot really well, but you said you didn't have any issues with it. No, I didn't have any issues uh, in the Hoka. It's definitely a bit more snug than the Rebel. The Rebel is gonna be a bit more accommodating for someone with a wider foot. It's just a wider platform in general, and I think there's more space in the forefoot, which I prefer with a wider foot, but I know you prefer that slimmer. Yeah, I almost wish that this shoe, they took a look at this one, narrowed up this shoe. You could probably drop some more weight on here, which is gonna be one of the determining factors between two shoes that we're gonna get to. 
but I think you could make this, I mean, if you look at the width there, you could make this one a little more dialed back on width and it would be still accommodating. And accommodating for Thomas, for the rest of us, we're good with this width and it's fine as is. All right, I'll let that one slide. We can argue about that one at the house. This one definitely has a wider platform, wider feel underfoot. It mimics very closely their high performance Elite V4, yep. which this just doesn't have a plate and that one has a full Piba midsole but it, it feels similar. This is a perfect training partner for that shoe. Yeah, um, let's talk about the weight since you brought it up. So my women's seven and a half in this shoe comes in at 5.3 ounces, which is basically race day light. Yeah. That is, that's the lightest, that's basically Vaporfly. Yeah, mine came in around that same weight versus the other shoes. So mine was in the sevens for a size 10 and a half. This one was an ounce heavier. Yeah, so my women's seven and a half came in at 6.8 ounces. Mine was 8.6. Anyway, the interesting thing about that is, I mean, it, they really do feel similar on the foot. This one wasn't noticeably. They're still both very, very light. But with me and weight, I'm always gonna lean towards the lighter weight. The only thing that could kind of sway me in this one is the fit of this one is just so much better for my foot. But I think for me, Meg, I think I'd still take this one just because I love the aggressive styling. I like the lightweight feel on the foot. This is one of the shoes that I've tried to put in extra miles in as I've uh, reviewed other shoes. So I have really close to 100 miles on this shoe. And I will say both foams start off feeling really fresh. And both foams, they don't die out, but you certainly lose that first 20 miles out of the box bounce off the toe. People complained about the uh, durability of the Mach 4 and 5, and I think that came down to they were using no outsole uh, yeah. rubber. They were just using the foam, yeah. EVA foam as the outsole. I do think that super critical foams hold up really well over time. I don't think you're gonna have a problem with durability with this. It still feels good after over 30 miles. This one, I think I'm at 90 or something miles on it. It doesn't feel as fresh as it did out of the box, but it still feels light and smooth and there's plenty of cushioning underfoot. You're just missing a little bit of the spring that, that you found when you first tried it on. Yeah, um, I think I have to agree with Thomas here. Between the two, I really enjoyed both, but because of the weight and the nice accommodating width of this shoe, I also feel like it's just a, maybe a slightly more bouncy feel underfoot. Um, I'm gonna go with the Rebel. What color did you get in the Rebel? All white. What color did you get in the Hoka? All white. Right, and I got blues in both. Yeah. So this is pretty much no factor is coming in with the color of the shoe, because mm -hmm. I know that Maiden can be swayed by all white shoes, at least The brands right have learned and they're just sending me all whites now. <laughs> but all right, so in this one, it's a really close call. Yeah. I really, I really feel like if you like Hoka and you yeah. like this brand, go ahead with this guy. If you like New Balance and you like some of this more angular, aggressive styling, go with the New Balance. Uh, you can't go wrong with either shoe, especially if you've been wearing heavier shoes, shoes that are weighing nine up to, some of these tr daily trains are coming in 11 ounces nowadays. Yeah. You throw this on, you feel like you're floating. So I'd say give it a shot. Yeah. Anything else you wanna say? That's it. All right, thanks for watching Between Two Shoes. Thanks Ralphie, you were good. <laughs> Look up here. There it is. Smell it. Smell it. <laughs> All right, Ralphie, between two shoes, you like the Rebel or do you like this one? Between this one, this one, and this one, which one do you like better? Huh? That one? <laughs> that was such a fail. Uh.